Hi, I'm Jay Goldman, and you are watching Mr. Mobile on Butterscotch.com. Now, today we're going to take a look at one of the most hyped phones since the iPhone came out. That's right, it's the Google Nexus One. And the real question on your mind may be, why was this phone so hyped? I mean, after all, it's an Android phone. We've seen Android phones before. Well, I'll give you a hint. It has a lot to do with the word Google on the back. This is the first time we've seen an Android phone actually that came from the Google mothership. The rest of them have all been produced sort of in partnership with Google. We've had a recent release of the Motorola Droid. It was kind of a big deal. This has sort of overshadowed it in a lot of ways because it is actually the Google phone itself. It's a really nice piece of hardware. I will say that for sure. It's designed by HTC. You can see an HTC logo at the back there. HTC has actually worked with uh, Google on a few phones in the past. The first Android phones that came out were all HTC models. This is, again, an HTC phone. It's powered by a Snapdragon CPU, which is a very fast little processor. And you can see it in a lot of the stuff that they've added into the software. Very responsive phone. So hardware-wise, internally, very nice. It's running Android 2.1. This is the first phone that we've seen that's running Android 2.1. And it opens up some interesting questions. I mean, it's running an operating system that comes from the Open Handset Alliance, although really built by Google, but sort of through the Open Handset Alliance. And there are a bunch of companies that are members of that alliance, like, say, Motorola, who just had a very hyped, you know, marketing-heavy launch of the Droid, or Milestone if you're outside of the U.S., and all of a sudden, it's overshadowed by the launch of Google's own phones. So what does that really mean? I mean, it, you know, as a member of the Open Handset Alliance, am I starting to sort of question whether Google's going to beat me at my own game? Well, we don't know yet. This is the first time it's happened. So I guess we'll have to see. But in the meantime, let's take a look at this phone. So great hand feel on this. It's got a soft touch back. We're seeing a little bit more of this, and I really like it in, in some of the new products that we've taken a look at. It just feels nicer than cold, hard plastic does or even aluminum on it. So I have to say, on points, you know, over the iPhone, the back here, definitely a nicer hand feel in it. In terms of dimensions compared to an iPhone, it's uh, almost exactly the same size. I mean, you know, visually they look pretty similar. This phone's actually a little bit narrower. It's also a little bit slimmer on the side view, so a little bit thinner that way. It's slightly taller, and it's a little bit lighter. So comparable in terms of pocket feel, but this phone is slightly smaller and a little bit lighter. On the back, we've got a 5 megapixel camera with an LED flash. The flash is a really nice touch when you're taking pictures in low light. I will say that this camera tends to rely on it a little too much, so if you're comparing to, say, an iPhone, the low light pictures will be better on the iPhone without the flash, better on here with the flash, obviously. The front's got a nice big 3.7 inch touch screen. This is an Active Matrix Organic LED or an AMOLED. Bright display, one of the first things that people say when they take a look at the phone is, wow, that display is really bright, and they're not lying. It's 480 by 800 pixels. That's 54 pixels smaller than the Droid. And you'll notice that really in the height on long menus. So if you're, say, scrolling through a lot of email in Gmail, for example, you're going to miss that 54 pixels. It would have shown you one extra message. But compared to an iPhone at 480 by 320, your resolution's a lot higher here. And that means you're going to see things a lot sharper. They're a lot crisper. You can read text that's smaller. So on the whole, really nice screen on here. However, and there always has to be a however, there's no multi-touch. Now, this is a pretty controversial issue. I mean, multi-touch only really made a, its sort of way into the world with the iPhone, and now we've become kind of spoiled and we're used to it. So we get a touch screen that doesn't have it, and we start trying to do hand gestures that we're used to on an iPhone with two fingers. They don't work on here. That really comes to play in things like zooming in and out on photos or on maps, rotating things around, and really in gaming. We've gotten used to seeing games on an iPhone platform where we can use both thumbs on the screen like this as two controllers. It doesn't work on here, only one finger at a time. It's rumored that this hardware actually supports multi-touch and that this phone may in fact have it in other regions of the world when it gets released there. So it may in fact be a patent issue or a legal issue along those lines and hopefully something that Google can resolve. The phone is definitely less useful because of the lack of multi-touch. And there are Android phones on the market that have it. So, you know, a point to keep in mind when you're looking at buying the phone. On the front, we've also got four soft keys here. You can see the icons underneath the screen. They're used throughout the operating system for various different things, and we've actually seen the same four soft keys in hard format on the Droid, so this seems to be becoming a bit of an emerging Android standard. It's not one I'm a huge fan of. I find they get in the way a little bit when typing, but on the whole, it's useful to have them here, and uh, you just have to remember to use them. So sometimes you get to a screen where you, you can't see an obvious way out of it, use the back button. Menus are hidden in here. You can get to your home screen, that kind of stuff. Got a little rollerball down here. Works exactly the same way as it does on a BlackBerry. So if you're coming from the BlackBerry world, you'll feel quite at home. You can roll the ball. You can also click. And this particular one glows when you've got a new message, so it acts as the new message indicator. 
Bottom's got uh, charging ports for docking this. You can buy a bunch of different docks. It's also got a micro USB port, and that's a standard, and we're seeing it as an emerging standard on a lot of phones. So if you are coming from the BlackBerry world and you've bought one of the more recent BlackBerry models, your micro USB charger will pop right in there and you'll be able to charge it. This, of course, comes with one in the box as well. Up on the top here, we've got the lock button that locks and unlocks the screen. It's actually the only thing that does, so tapping on the ball won't do anything point to keep in mind. We've also got your standard headphone jack, which is really nice because we don't have to buy proprietary headphones. And this, of course, comes with headphones in the box. So we've got a little set of headphones right there. We've got a micro USB cable. We've got a charging cable that's still in the box. And we've got a little sleeve that you can pop it in that's got the fun little Android character right there on the front. Battery life seems to be about on par with an iPhone 3GS. I get through a full day of using this and I've got about 20% left, so that's not bad. You'll probably want to plug it in every night all the same, but it's not a bad battery life and it's certainly a usable one. One of the things that was really hyped up about this phone when it was coming out was that Google was going to completely revolutionize the sales process. I guess in a way they sort of did because you can buy it directly from their website, but the truth is that it's an expensive phone unsubsidized and it's a similar price to the iPhone subsidized and you have to buy a T-Mobile two-year contract to get that price. So, you know, not the huge revolution I think people were kind of hoping for. All the same, if you're in the US right now, you can go to google.com slash phone and you can buy one directly from there and they will ship it to you. You can even get it customized. This one says butterscotch.com on the back. If you're not in the US, you'll get a little message that says you can't buy this phone in your region yet. Now there are obviously ways around that if you know what you're doing and you've got a proxy and that kind of stuff or just a friend in the US who wants to buy a phone and send it to you. The good news is the $529 unlocked version, which is what this one actually is, will work anywhere in the world that supports GSM. The $179 locked version will be cheaper, but tie you into a two-year contract on T-Mobile. A point about the unlocked version. This phone actually uses a slightly weird band for its 3G data. So although you'll get, three, you'll get uh, GSM voice and probably edge data using the unlocked version pretty much anywhere, you may not actually get 3G. So if you're looking to use this phone outside of the US and you're gonna buy the unlocked version, it should work, but you wanna check with your local carrier as to what band they use for their data in order to make sure that you'll be able to get full 3G connect connectivity. I'm Jay Goldman. This has been Mr. Mobile. Thank you, as always, for watching, and we'll catch you next time.